Hi, uh, my name is Max Adosena and I go by Color Fiction and I am the developer of Zero North Zero West. And Zero North Zero West is a surreal exploration game where you're wandering around all these different dream worlds and the ultimate goal is just to relax and have a very uh, meditative and chilled out experience. There's uh, about a hundred worlds that you get to explore and they're all open world so you can go in any direction and eventually you fall into another dream and then another dream and then another dream. It's really a game to play at the end of the day uh, for a little while, just to like so chill you out and get ready for bed. But uh, it's available now on Steam for Windows, and um, and I'm porting it right now for PlayStation 4 and also for virtual reality. You can find more about the game at uh, zeronorthzerowest.com, and my company Color Fiction. Uh, you can go to colorfiction.co. Uh, to find more about it or follow us at uh, Color Fiction and Twitter or Instagram. And the game right now is available on Steam and also itch.io. And um, right now the, the running platform is Windows. And uh, by next year it will probably be on PlayStation 4 and some other things. So yeah, if, if you all want to see more, uh, you should definitely check out this trailer right now. And Important to remember, uh, big seizure warning. If you suffer from pho photoelliptic seizures, be careful. What's up? I'm Brian from the Sheep's Meow. Uh, we've got two games out here. The first is Exposure, a game of camouflage. This is a game in which you're a tiny creature, completely defenseless in a dangerous world, and the only thing you could do to defend yourself is to change colors from white and black. And this lets you camouflage in the environment. Nobody Home is the story of two little ghosts searching a haunted house for cake and candy, but soon they learn that the house is haunted with humans. Ines Chung and G.J. Lee. Nobody Home is the story of two ghosts looking for cake in a house that's haunted with humans. The players are just trying out the controls there. Coming up, the players can work together to get the cake if they want, but they have to avoid the human at all costs. The cake are arranged in a way that requires teamwork, but they're just going to go for the door. Each page of the story is also a room in the house. Once upon a time, two little ghosts chanced upon an old haunted house full of delicious cake. They want this cake, but there's a human blocking the way. They're going to look around the room a bit more. Uh, let's fast forward a bit here. There's a moment when the players realize that the human follows the closest ghost. Then they work together to get this cake. Nobody Home is a cooperative game, and its levels are designed with two players in mind. Most of our playtesters talk to each other a lot about how to get the cakes or get through the rooms. Coming up, here's another part where the red ghost rushes ahead through the door, but the yellow ghost explores a dark passage and finds a way to get the bonus cake. Also figures out how to break bricks, too. You can hear old-time radio mysteries playing from the radios and TVs in the levels. Exposure is for Steam and Xbox One and will be finished this year. Nobody Home is for Steam and Xbox One as well and will be coming out next year in 2019. You can follow us on social media at The Sheep's Meow or visit our website at thesheepsmeow.com. And now you can check out our video for Exposure. Home by Brian S. Chung and G.J. 
daily. Once upon a time, two little ghosts cast upon an old haunted house full of delicious cake. It also had humans. Filthy. How irritating. This house must come down. The game is changing rapidly. Stay tuned for more updates. One of the games we're showing here is Slime Son. Uh, it's a super fast-paced Twitch platformer. Uh, you play as a little slime, you get eaten by a giant worm, and it's up to you to run and jump and sort of slime your way out of that worm and avoid being digested by stomach acid. Um, so it's on all platforms, including PC, so it's uh, Switch, Xbox, PlayStation. Um, if you're really into super frenetic, intense action platformers, then you'll have a good time with it. And here's a trailer. Another game we're showing is uh, Planet Diver, so it's the game we released before Slime Song. It's a, a thrill seeker wing, a thrill seeker who travels from planet to planet, trying to do wingsuit diving in, in the craziest environments she can find. So you play as this thrill seeker, who just you go to a different alien world each time, and you try and dive as far as fast as you can, and sort of see how long you can survive. Um, so it's on iOS and as well as PC on Steam. We have Cannon Crasher, which is a game on Android. You have two castles and a cannon on each one, and you're trying to duke it, duke it out and see and sort of establish dominance. You have trying to destroy the castle with the cannons. You can summon units, build fortifications, and just uh, yeah, battle it out. Uh, that's so that's on Android. And lastly, we have Spirit Sphere. So that's a game we helped to publish. Um, so it's on Switch. That there's Spirit Sphere DX. That it's kind of like one part tennis, another part magical beatdown. Uh, you, you're 
you're facing off in this sort of magical tournament, trying to use the spirit spheres that you're going to travel across the land, fighting with different enemies and different characters, trying to win this competition against the spirit spirit that unlocks wishes. Very much like an action sports game. Um, very much inspired by Zelda. A lot of fun with, with friends and playing with more players for this sort of party game experience. And here's a trailer. Hi guys, uh, this is, well, we're showcasing Plunder Kings right now. It's a uh, top-down shoot-em-up mixed with gambling. Uh, there are Currently there are three ships available with a support drone. Um, so the main mechanic in the game is you start out really weak and the more enemies you kill, you collect all the gems and you collect more power-ups. The more power-ups you have, uh, it increases your attack power of your ship. And uh, eventually it transforms into something uh, more powerful like lasers or some other attack uh, depending on which ship you uh, um, basically equipped. So there's also an optional gambling mechanic into it. Um, essentially if you wanted to impose a, a challenge on yourself you could place bets on how well you do such as no damage run. Basically if you don't take any damage during a stage you can uh, win the bet and get a bonus on whatever amount that you placed on, on your bet. Currently, we have five stages uh, developed right now. Um, we're, de we're balancing it and doing some UI tweaks. Uh, we're pretty close to release. We have at least about like a month left before uh, it's in shipping condition, I would say. So yeah. Um, and this is why, I, hi guys. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I'll take it from here. So really what happens is, um, we're a five-year company, yay, five years, and we've been doing this for quite a long time, making games. We love making games, right? Um, we're odd, we're spectacular, we're weird, we're a bit funny, maybe, possibly. You know what? How about this? Just go take a look at our games. We got a trailer just for you. Thank <laughs> you. 
And if you don't know, you can find us at... Oh, look at that. Tweet us at Goodnight Games. Okay? Everything is Goodnight Games. If you don't know what Goodnight Games is, Mr. Goodnight's not going to be happy. Goodnight Games, guys. Hashtag and all that stuff. All right, so here we are at Play NYC 2018, and we're speaking with a very important guest today. We have Francisco from uh, Lamplight, uh, who's who's here to talk about Lamplight City. Hello. <laughs> so, give us the elevator pitch for Lamplight City. So, Lamplight City is a detective game where it's okay to fail, and uh, basically that means that the game is well, the game is split into five cases, and you play as a detective and you, as the player, have to do actual detective work in order to succeed. So it's possible to uh, accuse the wrong suspect, or it's possible to screw up all your leads, declare a case unsolvable, but the game will still go forward, and the game is not going to hold your hand and push you to the right solution. You have to earn the right solution. So what you're saying is that this is like a true detective game, it's even a little bit classic too, with the, the difficulty a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's overly difficult. It's not impossible. But I, and I think, you know, as long as players are thorough and they, they do a decent amount of, uh, of investigation, then they'll, they'll be okay. Um, but yeah, it's, I just wanted to make a game where it wasn't going to just say, oh, well, just click, click, click. Okay, here's the end of the case. You know, you actually have to put in some sort of effort. And uh, how long was this game in development for? Uh, so it's, uh, no wait, sorry, it's August. I don't even know what it is. It's August of 2018. I started in May of uh, 2016, so about two and a half years. So what uh, platforms is the game going to be available on? It is going to be available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And uh, I guess your next question was where? Yeah, uh, Steam and GOG.com. And uh, where can they find uh, where they can, where they can find you at? Where can they find the company at? Uh, so you can find me uh, on Twitter. I'm at Grundislav Games. That's G R U N D I S L A V Games, all one word. Uh, and if you want to go to Lamplight City specifically, you can go to lamplightcity.com. That'll redirect you to my website. But my website's GrundislavGames.com. All my games are on there. Excellent. And what would you say to somebody who uh, would be looking at this game for the first time? to sort of encourage them to pick it up and play? I would say if you enjoy a good story, if you like detective mysteries, if you like uh, alternate history, if you're into uh, the sort of Victorian era and steampunky sorts of things, um, check it out, because that's got all of those things uh, and more. So there you go. <laughs> and uh, get ready to check out this trailer, which Francisco has provided us of uh, Lamplight City. This is the killer's fifth victim, and there isn't a single lead. So you want me to investigate? You hear the voices of the spirits as well, Mr. Fordham. I don't hear the voices of all spirits. Just one. What do you know about Madame Dupre's supposed death? You know death? anything about the murder that took place outside the side? Have you heard of the justice killing? Night? Why have you been passing on classified police information to Mr. Fordham? Because he's the best detective you ever had on the force, and you know it. Dumas, open this door right now. Why would I kidnap my own son? I'm innocent, Mr. Fordham. You have to believe Why me. is he called the Justice Killer? The man don't care about the dead. He just wants to make as much money as he can. I guess we all have our dark secrets. I swear to you, this was a one-time mistake. You won't see me like that again. You're not going crazy on me, are you, Miles? All right, everyone, welcome again to Stupid Gamers. It's me, Zero, and I'm here with... Uh, Mason. And we're here to talk about... Uh, Way of Rare. So tell me, what is a Way of Rare about? Yeah, so Way of Rare is a narrative-driven puzzle side-scroller. So you kind of walk around like you would a normal side-scroller. But the catch is, you can only interact with objects that match your current color. 
And so you have to decide what subset of the world you want to interact with at any given moment and figure out how to kind of make use of that switch to navigate the world. So how long, is this game in, how long was this game in development? Uh, the game's been in development for about three months. What made you want to develop a game like this? Well, like, where did you get the ideas for this game? Yeah, so what happened was I went to a uh, Bennett Foddy talk at GDC uh, last year, and he was talking about a class he teaches at NYU where they have the students make a game every week. And I thought, that's super cool. I bet I could get so much out of making a game in a week for a month. Maybe just make four different games, you know, just prototypes and see how they go. And so I signed up for a playcrafting expo uh, earlier in the year, a smaller expo, and signed up for it nine days before, eight days maybe before it started, and I didn't have a game yet. And then so I got some friends together and I was like, okay, we gotta do this, we got eight days, gotta build the game. And so I kind of went through my old files of other game ideas I had in the past, and I was like, oh, I had this color idea a while back, maybe I can build that into something. And then we went and just hammered out the prototype as fast as we could, and kind of failed at our original goal because we had so much fun with it that we decided not to make three more games and just to keep working on it. Sounds amazing, all right. So I see this game is on a computer, but what other system could we find this game on? So the plan right now is just to release it for Mac, Windows, and Linux. It's possible that after the initial release, we'll consider other ports, but we don't have any concrete plans yet. All right, excellent. And uh, from which services would uh, players be able to download this from? Um, we haven't set anything up yet, but probably Steam, probably Itch. All right, excellent. So uh, thank you for joining us for this, uh, for this interview. Um, your game looks amazing. Game idea is also amazing. And uh, we look forward to playing it. Oh, one last thing, though. Um, when is the game releasing, or is it, or is it already out? Uh, we don't have an announced release date yet, but prediction is maybe end of this year. If not, definitely by end of next. All right, excellent. Once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, nice to meet you, by the way. Thank you for having me. Uh, and this has been Two Stupid Gamers. See you guys next time.